I'm delighted to be in Romford, Romford Snooker Centre, with the president of Matrim Sport and, well, the boss of snooker, Mr. Barry Heron. Yeah. Pleasure to have you on. I can't believe after all these years I've known you, this is the first time we've ever had a game of snooker. We've never played snooker before never. together. I've known you since you were 17. Do, do you want to break or shall oh, I break? I know I have to break. Okay. Because you'll smash it up and take liberties with me. What do you reckon is a fair score for me? I think you? you should replicate Davis and give me 70. Okay. On the grounds that I haven't played for so long. All right. And and he's not allowed too many snookers, and I have two people in the car park ready to sort him out <laughs> if he takes liberties. Come on then, let's right. see the cue okay. action. Well, thank you for very much for this honour. Thank you very much. An honor. Right. You've even got a little finger Haven't twitch. Sent. The proper finger twitch. Well, yeah, that's a bit hard. It's a bit hard, but I'm going to hit the brown on the way back. No, I'm not. Oh, the cushions are a bit bouncy. Oh, these cushions are much too You've bouncy. That, you look, look at that, you see, right? No, no, no. Now, this is a clearance in anybody's language. So, you, the, you, you own this club? Yes. Is that right? And, and Steve, so when did you first see Steve? I was sitting downstairs in about 1974, and the manager said, there's a kid up here you should come and have a look at. I thought, I've got nothing else to do, because I, I didn't start playing snooker in those days till about 12.30 every right. day, and then I played throughout. And I went up, table 13, Steve was playing Vic Harris, who was the Essex champion. How old was Steve? I think he was 17. Right. And I can't say I, I knew enough about snooker to know how good he was. But let me do that for you, it's an honour. <laughs> um, but I could just see, he had that look about the determination and the focus. Right. And, you know, I, I wasn't capable of saying, great player. Yeah. I thought, this kid is not, he had no personality, he never opened his <laughs> mouth, never said a word to anybody. I was a bit like myself. Well, you was very similar. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it's touch and go who had least personality. Well, I, I, I kind of took on the mantle of the miserableness and the, and the sort of like not speaking yeah. to anyone That's from Steve. That's why you and Davis get on so <laughs> yeah. well. well. I knew he was focused and determined. It was later when I found out that he could really play. Right. And then over a period of time, we just became friends in a way. I don't know why, I was like a big brother, I suppose. And uh, yeah, it, it just developed from there. You know, I like to gamble. I like to, you know, be involved in events, even in a small way in those days. So I would bring top pros down and play in, in the match room next door. What money is, matches? Yeah. What they, sort of money would you play for? In those days, I mean, I used to, I played on table 13 myself for 6,000 pound a game in those days. Wow. So we played- In the some, 70s? Yeah, it was a lot of money. Wow. That's... But you play someone at your own level. Yeah. So yeah. when Davis was there, because everybody smoked and there was this, hands used to come out. It was like at a Bangkok kick fight. <laughs> you know, someone would go out and that's 500 and just nod. And it was done. The bet was on and there was never a query. Yeah. Oh, we would have, were well, certainly into the 20 plus thousands on a night. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the most I played, I think it was a, a thousand pound, I think. Oh, yeah. That's well, first. this is Romford, mate. You don't get away with a thousand pound here. I think snooker in those days was all about money matches. Yeah. Whether it was a tenner or loser pays the table or there was always something on every game. You never just played. And who, who, who's the sort of players you would have played then? Top players of the day? Well, I brought down Reardon, Mountjoy, Spencer, Higgins several times, Dennis Taylor. Right. Everybody, Terry Griffiths. He was unbeaten and never, he was never beaten on that table really? next door. And Higgins, Higgins, what was Higgins like then? Oh, mate. <laughs> had him up against a wall twice downstairs. <laughs> and he was a pain in the ass. But he was a crowd pleaser and the crowd, you know, the oh, crowd right, loved him. No, it doesn't go. Yeah, no, it goes. No, it doesn't go. No, it doesn't go, but I'd like you to try it. Long blue, this is a tester. See, you that's, see that's, that's the difference between you. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Why did I say 70 and not 170? <laughs> no, Higgins, he, we'd get 300 people buying a ticket next door. And would it, this be before Steve turned pro? Yeah, yeah, it's amateurs. I was, like the same way as your manager did with you, or yeah. you did, it was just a way of, how do you get experience into a youngster? Yeah. Well, you throw him in the deep end and let him play the best players in the world. Yeah. But we would get 14 start in those days. Really? And Alex would come in and he'd go, what price am I? And then we go, well, you're six to four against. Six to four against, against a kid. And he go, how much am I on? You're on 500 pound for tonight. Right, I'll have that. And then he go, plus I'll have that, that, give me jacket, that. <laughs> and I remember one day he held out and he was up to about 1700 and something. And he held out a hand of coins and he said, call that a pound. 
he lost every single penny he had on him every time he came down every here. time and every time he left he would say to me because he never drove alex yeah he'd say could you lend me 50 quid for me train fare home <laughs> it wasn't a lend it was but he was entitled to it and what, what, what was steve's share of that he got, 20, mama, cause, cause he mama got 25 I was quid a night no. Ian, Ian used to bear the brunt, obviously, the losses, but mm. I got half. Oh. But I hardly won a money match. Steve was on £25 for playing. Right. And then he'd have a drink out of the gambling profits when we go to a Chinese or an Indian after the game. So he didn't get anything from the actual game? No, actual no, bar- no, no, no. He's oh, really? there to learn. Right. <laughs> Uncle Barry knows best. <laughs> That's why we called... This, this is just too good. I mean, this It's is, an easy game, isn't it? Is it I mean, at the end of the day, it's an easy game, isn't it? I mean, you make it look easy. <laughs> But D- Davis was never bothered his entire career yeah. about what the prize money was or what the money was. He knew that if he got a trophy, that, he, that it would be accompanied with a good check. Right. I never can ever remember him asking me at any time, what's the prize money in this event? Right. Never was interested. Really? And when he played here, he was just so happy to get 25 yeah, quid. I, I, must say, I, I, was, I was the same. I wasn't really... Because no. I, I think if you think about the prize money, you well, wouldn't be able to pot a ball. If you think about that. There was only one game, the Yamaha Organs in Derby. He was 7-1 up or 8-1 up. He had a straight pink for the game and he missed it by six inches. And he won the next frame. Yeah. And I said to him, what, what, what's, what happened with that pink? He went, I suddenly remembered it was 10 grand for the winner. I said, I went completely. <laughs> so that was a good lesson to learn. <laughs> And so when was the first time I would have met you? Would that be when, when you, because you brought Steve up to Scotland? Well, that was the I, worst mistake I ever made. Because I, I, your, I just your... turned pro, I think. And, and No, I don't think you were quite pro at Not that time. Not even pro? No. Your, man, your old manager, Ian Doyle, phoned me up and said, would you send Steve up here to do a series of exhibitions with this kid I've got, Stephen Hendry? And I, to be fair, because I, I do my homework, I'd followed a little bit of your career, yeah. snooker scene results and stuff yeah. like that. And I knew you could play. I knew you was a prospect. Yeah. And I said to Davis, I want you to go up there, Steve. So he said, really? What, seven days? I went, no. You go up there. I want this kid annihilated. I want him destroyed every night, night after night. If you're 100 in front, I want the snooker behind the other. I want this and kid's he did. brains in, my, in a jam jar on my mantel. I, I, was, I mean, I was And he so, slaughtered you for a week. I was so embarrassed, And it was honestly. the worst thing we ever did. Yeah, oh. well, you were supposed to be embarrassed. That was the plan. Yeah, I mean, Scot- I'm in Scotland wherever. You were supposed to bounce back and learn from it, <laughs> I was. You? I was the great hope of Scotland, and, oh. I, and I'm playing these venues at about a thousand people, and yeah. I'm getting absolutely taken apart every night, night that, after night. It that was, was just, the plan, but it, it was did, horrible. It didn't work out. It was the worst thing I ever did. I should never have... Who's, been, who's idea? Who approached who? Did Ian approach you or did you? me yeah and said you know, I've mean, got, well he's doing the right, he was doing the right thing yeah i mean i never particularly got on well with your manager but uh, uh, he was he was doing not the many right people thing. did no no he was a cantankerous old bastard oh that was good try to split the pack i remember now, though, if you roll up behind the yellow here, i am seriously going to take you out with the bat well it depends what we're playing for but um no but that but after that six night i mean i just i just thought that because we, we knew, but between Ian and I, we knew if I, I obviously I'd, Jimmy was my hero growing yeah, up. He had yeah, the flair yeah, and everything. Yeah. But we knew if I was going to do anything, was Steve more. was the one yeah. that I had to. And for after that, honestly, I, I just realised that well, no one's as good as him. And I got so much confidence beating beat every. I'm not going to. I'm not going to snook you, Barry. I'm not. No, no, I should think not. I mean, we were friends once. So it was a lot. Anyway, you can cut that brown in easy. Ooh. Oh, I'll fluke it then. <laughs> you see, that's one of the reasons why he was such a great player. <laughs> When he missed, he was lucky. Yeah, but the best quote was, I remember Willie Thorne saying to Steve Davis, why why did you get so many flukes? Why are you so lucky? And Steve says, I play more frames, Willie. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, after that six nights, yeah, that was a that was a, a, a huge thing. So did Steve ever say, what did Steve say about me then after that six Come nights? Come back and say he's a good player. Right. I said, hmm, didn't sound like it. 9-0, 9-1, yeah, yeah, yeah. he went... No, he's a good player. I mean, but but oh. he wouldn't have thought at that stage. No. That what would, what? Well, no, I hope the job had been done on you. That was the plan. <laughs> I mean, I know it sounds nasty, but it, it was kill or be killed. You know, I mean, Davis had come along and was really the first professional yes. snooker player in the real world. Yeah. He practised, he lived the game, he yeah. led the right life. And the Reardons and Spence were all great players, but they had that, they didn't have that percentage in their head you know yeah. the 80 20 shots and the, yeah i think he recognized that you had a similar right. thing in you i mean he did it once we were playing snooker down at dimchurch at an amusement arcade i earned and they had a competition locally yeah and this nine-year-old kid won it 
and his prize was he gets to play one frame with Steve Davis. Right. And I went down there with him and the kid broke and Davis had a hundred and then played a snooker behind the yellow and everyone <laughs> boomed. And I said, oh, you know, the kid conceded the frame shortly afterwards and I said, that was a bit cruel. And it's Steve and he went, did you see his cue action? I went, yeah. He said, he can play, but already he knows he can't beat me. And, and that was the attitude he took when he played you. Yeah. He came back and said, he's a good player, but I think I've done his heading because it, it was quite embarrassing for him. Uh, yeah, it was because I, I was just so raw. I went for everything, but he was playing proper, proper snooker. Oh, well, he was and he under, didn't have to. He was under very clear instructions. I love hitting this ball too hard on this table. I think your eyes have gone, Barry. Well, no, my, I've just had new, new lenses in both eyes. So I, can't, I can't even offer that as an excuse. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you and Steve must have had some memories together. I mean, when he, when he was well, like the, be yeah. the, the, the best. No, listen, we had the greatest time yeah. ever. We never stopped laughing. We made a pile of money. We was the first new kids on the block. Yeah. You came after You even had aftershave. We had everything, our own range of aftershave, <laughs> our own slippers, our duvet covers. Did they still covers. sell that aftershave anywhere? Uh, no, but I did <laughs> discover some quite recently. And Steve, Steve was like, everybody was like a friend with Davis, he did chat shows, he did that. It was incredible. But, I mean, obviously, Matt Matram was the, the dominant the dominant well, team you had all, all the all the best players didn't you whoever, it seemed whoever won the world championship you'd sign them but we was only dominant because of the talent we represented yeah i mean matram's grown into a huge global company but at that time when we had davis yeah we were the kings yeah when your man when you started winning they were the yeah, kings yeah. it's how all did, talent led because but I, but I, I always thought because obviously when it's the first one i'm sure steve was the same it's all it's all about you and then all of a sudden we're signing all these other players i'm thinking you're the talent, but you really got no idea of how to make a business out of it. No. You're very good at what you do, but you need people like me or your old manager yeah. to say, right, and what we do is you create, we create a brand called Matram. Yes. That's why we had our aftershave. No, then. We had a rubbish name, didn't we? Q yeah, terrible, we <laughs> terrible name. I mean, it's no, but we had a name where it symbolised something. It symbolised working class. It symbolised Romford. You know, it, it worked out for us. But again, you've still got a win. I think it goes up here. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know where it goes. I'm just checking up. Like, <laughs> trying to put <laughs> it in between. It's after it's spot. Of course you want it up there. I understand that. Oh, no, yeah, enough. but also along that way, see what you did and what Davis did, you made snooker into a big business. And part of that business is the playing side. The other part is the commercialization yeah. that gives you the lifestyle because you can't, prize money is always great, yeah. but that should be the tip of the ocean. And that's where you make real money out of sport by growing the brand of the sport, yeah. which we've gone on to with, I mean, we took it to, uh, well, we went to Thailand first, and then we went to China in 83, and all of the Southeast Asia came about because of a handful of players, matching yeah. players, going out there and saying, well, you was there, you know. I, I mean, well, I was gonna go on to that, because the first time I went to Asia, Hong Kong, um, well, you and Rob will save my life, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I, right. I, I, I'll tell you guys, so I got, um, after the final, we got a little bit drunk. And then the next <laughs> day, Jimmy White had a friend that had this huge yacht, wasn't it? A yeah. huge boat and decided to take us out on a trip. You, so. I remember this so clearly. Yeah, go oh, on. But I was like, I put, so you didn't my, swim. But, yeah, I can't swim. You can't swim. Well, I can swim in a swimming pool, but certainly not in the sea. No, no. But you had plenty of, I said, this kid's got bottle. You jumped into that sea with a with a, a safety jacket on. You remember? I, I had and to me get and off the boat. Yeah, I we, had to get off the We pulled you on about <laughs> half a mile out, and we pulled you the whole way. But, but the <laughs> fact you had the bottle to get in in the first place is something. Yeah. That's the, a story about the mat. Unfortunately, I knew every time I met you, I realised we were going to have a bigger and bigger problem. It was very <laughs> depressing. Yeah, I had to get off the boat, and Barry and Robbo actually, I got on their shoulders, and they swam me to the shore to which I fell asleep for a couple of hours, woke up and I had sunburnt one face, <laughs> and then I was fine. And then we come back and obviously Jimmy has a speedboat, because Jimmy's going around a speedboat, I'm yeah, on the I beach know. recovering, and Jimmy's on a speedboat with Steve, and Steve shit himself, because Jimmy's going, and That's Jimmy sunk the boat. But then he sunk the boat. Yeah. And he turned around to the bloke who owned the boat and said, sorry about that, mate, how much do I owe you? <laughs> I said, Jimmy, keep your foot. Keep, keep, so that's about 25 grand, that boat. He went, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm, oh, my God, we did. So would, 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 would Jimmy be the most, the most headaches that you've ever had from, from a well, client? Jimmy's got a special place in my heart. In but you can, you can never be angry at him, could you? No, me? But, and I mean, he's the same guy now <laughs> that he was. He was always Jack the Lad. 
Now, although he still loves his snooker, if he had the same attitude now that he had then, he'd have won three or four world championships. He loves it, he practices, he takes it very seriously, he gets so upset when he gets beat. Before, it was just like, I'll see you later. Yeah. And he'd be off tipping stuff down his neck or worse. And he never gave himself a proper chance to be the player he could have been. But he's such a lovely guy, you can't, you can't get upset with him. This is a joke. If this goes in, that is a joke of a shot. Of course it's going in. That is a joke of a shot. <laughs> Do you know what? I really hate him. I really, really, I never liked him. <laughs> Were you ever, ever close to signing Alex Higgins? No. No. He was completely wrong. And it sounds mercenary to say this, because in some ways you loved Alex Higgins. He was such a character. But he was completely wrong for the brand of Matram. What we were trying to do was to professionalise the game. We were on time, we said thank you, we smiled. We never left the building until everyone had autograph. Yeah. And to throw Alex, it was enough of a risk to throw Jimmy. But it was a <laughs> risk just about worthwhile and it, and it was good for us. But to throw Alex into it would have run the risk of endangering everything we were trying to build up for the game. Yeah. I mean, See, do, once do, again, I keep it in this you, you, too hard. Yes, you're hitting it very hard. I'm playing much too hard. This, 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 this cloth, this, I hate this cloth. You're just play, playing, in, playing into my, my game here. Because that's why I'm playing these qualifiers now. And I'm coming out, and these kids are playing safety so good now. Oh, no. It's unreal. Well, see, that's because that's, they've that's, done what you did. They've learned. Well, not, learned from not, not safety. Not from me, they didn't. No, your safety <laughs> was pretty good when you were at the top of your game. Same as Davis's. But all sport moves on, doesn't it? I mean, the, the, the 80s was, it was unreal for snooker. I mean, oh, I mean 1985, 20 million people or whatever. I mean, it's I just, I, I mean, the, the viewing figures still stack up now, though, don't they? The, the game is bigger now than it's ever been, but it's not yeah. bigger than it was in England. Right. It's a global game. So yeah. the World Championships in those days had an audience of 20 or 30 million. Today, the World Championships has got an audience of 500 million. Right. But it's all over the world because we're a global sport. We're in a snooker club here, but there's not many snooker clubs around, is there? Well, nowadays, nowadays, like everything else. Do you remember when we when we were in Hong Kong? We used to go and do an exhibition at a snooker club that had bought snooker tables. Yeah. And sometimes we'd do five or six in a day. Yeah. And it would be usually Davis and Jimmy. Yeah. And you'd go in there. Davis would play one player. Jimmy would play the other. And Davis would do ten minutes of trick shots, and we were out in under an hour. And I'd do five or six of those a day, work them to death, because we sold a thousand snooker tables yeah. in, wow. in Hong Kong alone. Yeah. And we were on 200 pound a table. Nice. So <laughs> it was 200 grand that I couldn't, I didn't want it to go anywhere else, did I? <laughs> and I remember your, your, your guy was looking, going, he wants a bit of this. He wasn't quite up to the top end of it, but he was getting there, he was getting there. But the, the biggest memory is how much fun we had. Yeah. It was just, I mean, watching you have a drink at that age wasn't a pretty sight. No, well, Usually yeah, two, a Coca-Cola was two enough drink, for you. Two drinks, that was it. Well, I've really enjoyed this frame with him. <laughs> it's not over yet, because you've no, got, no, no. you got 70 start. No, but actually, I'm enjoying watching it, so I'd like you to carry on and clear. <laughs> I can lean up against the wall, pretend. Oh, that's, that's not hard Stephen, you're not hitting the ball at all badly, you know. I mean, you do know this is Romford, don't you? <laughs> do you watch snooker if you're at home? Yeah. You do still watch, you, you, yeah, you yeah, actually I'm still like, like watch. I'm about the game, yeah. Stephen. I mean, obviously, you know, my company owns it, so at the end of the day, I've got a vested interest in making sure it's successful. And I still get involved, but the, the management of snooker is in a decent enough place. And you, I mean, yeah. the, the future, you're right, is still, yeah, I mean, I, what happens for us? I mean, we've now got like, Sullivan's 48, yeah. Williams 48, Hengs 48. Yeah. Who's, you know, you know, what, you know what? that Everyone doesn't matter. says that. Yeah. Well, what's going to happen when Palmer and Nicky yeah, yeah, stop yeah, yeah, playing yeah, yeah, golf? Yeah. The answer is Tiger Woods comes along. Yeah. And that's the but the thing is, I don't see sport. anyone like them coming along. Well, that's no, the thing. They, well, they were out there. They, yeah. They'll just appear. It's right. the mysteries of sport. Whether I hope it's so. Julian Boko or whatever, all these kids that they tell me are going to be great. But they don't get through Q school, so I don't know how great they're going to be. Oh, oh. Well, no. You just cannot believe the run he's having. <laughs> no, but I think what, that, what it does show to me is that if you play by the rules and you give, you can go on for years and years. I mean, I've always said to you, you retire way too early. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean, you just got miffed that you couldn't win any, everything. I did, I did, yeah. I did. As, as Steve always point, points out, you throw the toys out of the pram when you're yeah, not the best yeah, anymore. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did, but it's okay. You, you did the life what you chose. That's okay. But um, yeah, I mean, still have the love of the game. 
I, I don't even know how much I've scored here. Six. Six. <laughs> yeah, Another know. safety. I mean, the geezer don't even leave you each. <laughs> not even one shot. What, what, I always remember that, that when you when Steve won it the first time, you come running down, you almost oh, yeah. took him out. Yeah, That's I'll, like, I'll tell you what, honestly, I mean, when you look back on it, that moment changed my whole life. I mean, I was always going to be okay. Chart yeah. the county. Was there people from this club in the Crucible there, there wasn't there? There's about it? 50 of them. Right. No, 35 of them. They're right. from Raw. Yeah, that's and right. And this yeah. is the nugget. who They're back next door the whole time and won money yeah. every week. So he became sort of a folklore hero. But for me, there was a much bigger picture. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to be the governor. Right. I was going to be the manager of the governor. Yeah. <laughs> and that gave us power and, you know, opportunity, which we took, we, we maximised that. Just a little have, bit worried about that. Have you got the same buzz, you know, the, the other sports, like the box and the darts, have you got this, ever got the same buzz, uh, that, that first buzz when Steve won the world title with any other sportsman? That, that moment stands alone. Yeah. But some of the moments get close because as you get older, you know, AJ fighting Klitschko or Chris Eubank doing this yeah. or Davis winning the Moscone Cup that you all call Beth McGreen. <laughs> Fisher mania. I mean, my whole life is a buzz. It has been since I was involved, you know. So... I'm just happy to be able to be part of it. And I'm, I'm a bit worried about it. That's better. That's better. I was worried about that black. It was a perfect plant. You're going to have to play a safety shot, yeah? A safety shot? Yeah, you get behind the yellow. Much too much check side. Listen, if I got one ball, lap of honour naked around, run for car park. Shot. Shot. I think I might get the yellow here, Stephen. <laughs> so there's, no, there's nothing radical you change about the game now do you think the thing is going is there any any i mean obviously if it's if it's secret you can't show it but are there any no, no, there's no plans or involved. new countries to go to or i think we are on the cusp now of a next big push coming out of covid mm -hmm. we've had two and a bit years with no china suddenly we didn't take a chance we did the right thing you know the chinese players have got banned everyone said to me how can you do that other sports wouldn't do that think of the commercial i said no integrity comes before yeah. everything and it worked. And the, re the response from China has been good from and that as well. the response from China was we want six more events this year. Right, and so, they, this, so they're, support, they're fully behind the decisions then? Yes, and, and actually, I don't know if you know this, do you know the Chinese government added about 40% to their penalties? Really? Yes. I did not know that. No, so that's good, but we're very close now with the Saudis. We're also talking to Yeah, because there was supposed to, before COVID, there was supposed to be a tournament there, wasn't there? Because I was going to go work out for TV. Green. But what people don't realise is once COVID stopped, they still had a lot of catching up to do, and it's taken this amount of time. You're not scared of a, a live snooker tour, are you? <laughs> I'm scared of everything. <laughs> Complacency is the one thing I'm scared of, where you think you've cracked it because you've never cracked it. Yeah. But I think we'll find that we'll get, in the next 12 months, we'll have six tournaments in China. I think we'll have at least one in the Middle East. And I think for the first time in history, the prize money will go through 20 million. Right. So that's a step. But it's only a step. Yeah. You can't relax. Yeah. I mean, is, 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 is gambling sponsorship on the way out? or No. Still in fact, we will be in a stronger position with gambling when the government report outlaws shirt sponsorship. <laughs> That's nearly there, and I think I've pushed it south. <laughs> no, I think sponsorship's always been difficult. Yeah. But it's the one area where I think we can do better. Yeah. Because what what, when I go to tournaments, what my criticism would be is, is like, obviously being in the 80s and, and playing the tobacco sponsor. To, oh, you put in your own score. You're quick to put your own score up, aren't you? Oh, you're right. and you didn't even know what I was getting. Cheers. Uh, what, what's 40? <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the, the tobacco tournaments were such great events yeah. I mean backstage yeah, they tournament so offices. much money to spend yeah, yeah, yeah. when you go to the tournaments now they're, they're a bit soulless now the tournaments I find there's, there's no one in the players lounge there's no one it's just I just I don't agree with you I just think it's come of age it's a yeah. proper sport a proper professional sport you go to yeah, a major no, golf no, tournament no when Tiger at all, was at the top no one sat on the same table yeah. on the PGA Tour why? Yeah. because they all want to win it and it's not about having a good time anymore it's about winning Unlucky. Uh -huh, you thought it was safe, didn't you? Well, I still think I'm pretty safe. <laughs> oh, I, oh, that's a big pocket up there. That's We're going to pop the back across outside, yeah, yeah without doubt. Oh, oh no, this is this I've has definitely gone in. That's the biggest pocket so far, and I've missed it. No, but you're old fashioned, you see. You just but, that, but that's what I mean. You go back to the, the 80s were different. In yeah, the but way, the, the, the way difference is now is where you've failed and I've succeeded. 
I move with the times. You're stuck in a time warp. You're stuck in a time warp. Your perception of snooker, it's sport in general, young people in general, it's a different market and we have to move with that. So it isn't a jolly up all up in the, all up in the sponsor's room having a fag and a bet and a... No, but it's, those it's, days no, but are gone. Yeah, it's just, but they it's go just the back armor. to practice yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I suppose. Yeah. But that's but why they're so good. They've learned they just from don't you seem like Davis. I mean, the, the, the Masters is unbelievable, though. That, that, that is incredible. Yeah, the Masters um, is great because the Masters has become a brand in its own mm. right. And it's in London. It's a good venue. Mm. You know, we can get better with venues as well. Yeah, I think. I think so. But don't forget, you know, you're... Again, harping back to the it was all like theatres and stuff, where now it's leisure centres yeah, more. Yeah, and stuff. yeah. Well, the leisure centres have got to go. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. But, well, I think Ronnie would be happy about that. Yeah, but I'm not in the business to make Ronnie happy. I'm in the business to make snooker bigger. And, I, you know, and it's got to be for the good of the game, not good of an individual. Do you get on with Ronnie? Eh? Are you, are you, are you, are you love friends him. with Ronnie? I love him. I wouldn't say I'm friends. I, I should be friends because yeah. we go back a long way. Yeah. And Ronnie is one of those people, he, just, that, he doesn't like authority. No. You know, that's okay because I am authority. And one day, he won't be playing, but my authority will reign supreme. <laughs> you know, because that's what, that's what my job is. I'm a certainty not to pot this, but we'll give it a little roll up. That's the trouble. But I mean, in all seriousness, when, when Ronnie does stop, it's going to be, because tournaments are different when he's in them. No question, no question. And, and we end. should enjoy every moment he's in, because yeah. the man's a genius. Oh, yeah, he's always absolute genius. I thought you replaced Davis as number one. I think Ronnie's replaced you yeah, as number one. Yeah, he's taking the game up a level, yeah. no doubt I about think it. he's no doubt. Look at this dirty, and look at this dirty I, trick. This is not a dirty oh, no. trick. Get him. Oh, oh, what a bastard. Seven oh. points away. Things are looking better. <laughs> and a free ball. And a free ball. I'm slowly throwing this away, this game. I'm not going to ask you, I'm going to need time to think here. I'm not going to ask you a question because I don't want no, to distract you, can, you. No, no, you can't distract people, me. People are saying usually I chat too much. I'm putting the players off. I'm chatting too much. No, no, no. <laughs> Listen, I'm Steve just, Davis. Steve to be honest with you, I'm just enjoying myself, Steve. Steve, Steve said to me, he says, um, he says before he says, he says you, wouldn't, you wouldn't speak to anyone. He says, you know everyone. He says, and now you're running around asking everyone to do your YouTube time. You're a pest now. You become a pest. <laughs> whenever, whenever you walk into players, like all the other players are saying, oh no. <laughs> Davis is such a character. Mate. I'll tell you what. He's, no. done, he's, he's, done, he's done the blur thing. The first one was 30, yesterday. 30,000 30, people. Was it 30 or 60? No, no more than no, 90. Wembley. Yeah, 90. Yeah, 90. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Well, he's just done his fifth Glastonbury. Mm. Have you listened to his music? It's, yes, horrific. it's, it's horrific. absolute horrific. <laughs> he sent me a tape the other day of his latest number one LP or album. Where, where's it number one? In his, no, in in the, his house? In the genre of his music. <laughs> okay, right? okay. So I listened to it on Fast Track and I sent him a text back saying, track seven was almost bearable. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Stop. There's not a double. I might have to try and play safe here. Get back in this frame. Oh, I tried to get behind the black. Is the World Championship going to stay at the Crucible as long as you're involved? Yeah, I think the danger you've got is Eddie. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I can just, we'll just say it's leaving then. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie is not a snooker fan. Right. And he's very, like, I've, one thing I've taught him is just be honest, you know, tell the truth. Yeah. And uh, he's not a snooker fan, and it's tempting, I know, but they've got four years. I'm really laying the gauntlet down to Sheffield City Council. Right. Because I'm fed up with being the guy that always does the right thing. Yeah. So I'm saying to Sheffield, I want to stay. Build me a new venue. You like it, you tell yeah. me it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to Sheffield, I believe you. Yeah. And I will commit. You've got four years. Give me a venue that holds two and a half thousand people. Not a lot. Right. That's about, I think that's the perfect crowd. Like the Masters, yeah. it's two and a half thousand. And, and, and have it the same way, the yes. same kind of theatre. Call it the Crucible. Yeah. Just change the name. Leave yeah. the Crucible theatre doing theatre stuff. Right. But don't tell me you love me and then leave me to pay the bill <laughs> when we've had dinner. <laughs> I think that, that's, that's, that's probably going to... A lot of snooker players that would watch this would be quite scared about that. Then if Eddie takes over and he doesn't like snooker, 
but you know what? As he gets older, perhaps he learns to love it. I mean, he will. Uh, yes, hello. It's a good shot. He will love it as a business. Right. But he won't ever have the passion that I've got for the sport. God, how did he fluke his way? But then, there? but then, I suppose you look at most big sports. Do the people who run them really love the sports? They do it because of their business, isn't it? I suppose well, at the end of the day, a lot of associations love the sport they're doing, but they're absolutely at commercialising the sport. Yeah, well, that's been snooker so, since but that's that was what a pro, I've seen pretty much everywhere. I mean, we're we're taking over nine ball pool now, and it's a lot of fun because I'm beating associations that have never done anything other than turn up themselves in their blazer and charge business class airfares. Right. That's basically how I sum up most. Yeah. And the IOC is a joke. You know, how they can, what, what should we have next? Skateboarding in the Olympics? <laughs> and hundreds of millions of people play snooker and it's not an Olympic sport. Yeah. So I lose, you know, realistically, they don't do anything for me. He's at it again. I know there's a, a skill in nine ball, but I just, just a pool, I just don't. It's just another business. It. Yeah, yeah. It's another business that people can change their lives through. Yeah. You may not be one of them, but there'll be plenty of other people. Are oh, you jammy little Scottish bastards? <laughs> Man, I feel so lucky, this geezer. It's only a matter of time. That pink is my only saviour. I'm leaving that there. That's nice. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. You're going to roll me up behind the black, you little that's rascal. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Oh. oh. That's one of the reasons I retired. That was a horrible D-cell yip. When they come yeah. into your game, that's not good. No, 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 but you're still lucky enough to carry on playing. Who who approached who about doing um, the Chaz and Dave mute the, the song, the phoned, songs? Oh no, baby, don't do that to me. I phoned Chaz and said, he just done the Tottenham record. I said, I've got an idea. Let's do a snooker record. He went, what are we going to say about snooker? I said, I told him the players we had under contract. <laughs> I told him something funny about all of them. And he went out and wrote a classic song that's still sung at Christmas parties. I must have talked you off that one. Chaz and Dave, God bless you. 220,000 records sold. Snooker be in Romford Rap. Romford Rap sold 91. And I realised the music business is not as easy <laughs> as I thought it was. <gasps> oh. oh, no. It's not free ball. Oh, wow, that was close. That was close. Bloody hell, that was close. Oh, you bugger. Excuse my language, sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought that was him when I hit it. But you, you say you're re retired, but you're not retired, really, no, are you? You'll, you'll never retire. Never. Why can I retire when I'm having so much fun? Well, why can I retire when you give me seven? Uh, seven, that makes it interesting. I'll put you in again, Stevie, okay. please. On the grounds I'm too lazy to get the rest out. <laughs> but obviously, you don't, you don't do, you're not as full on as you used to be, obviously. Yeah, I like to think that, but you know, I still alter my rankings every single tournament by hand. 128 <laughs> players. So I must be sad, mustn't I? I do it for darts as well. I just love, I just think I'm so lucky to have the job I've had all my life, you know? Look oh, at this. That was some shot, Mr. Hendry. Yeah, people say I can't play safe. Ah, uh, good shot. Stop. Go on, rest oh. on, rest on. Can't talk to him, can you? It doesn't work. No. Started off this frame quite well. I thought you, yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's when you haven't played for yonks and yonks. Get in. <laughs> okay, at least it makes it interesting. But you must miss it, Stephen. I mean, I know you're, you know, you've got other things in do, your I do, life. I do, I do. Because when there's nothing quite like the adrenaline, but I mean, I get 1% of the adrenaline and that's enough for me. Yeah. You know, walking in the ring with Joshua or something like that, walking behind Davis as he comes out, yeah. being in Hong Kong when I'm doing the MCC, in, the MC in, not the MCC, yeah, it's yeah. cricket. You remember that day when Griffiths had been smoking one of Jimmy's fags <laughs> and I introduced the greatest trick shot player in the world, Terry Griffiths, and he walked in like this. <laughs> Hello, bar. I just had one of Jimmy's fags. <laughs> you don't get mo moments like that, do you, yeah. normally? No, I mean, I mean I'm about, if I'm working for BBC or ITV and you're out in the front, say you're out in Ali Pali or The Crucible and the crowd's there and everything, the atmosphere, that, that, you, that's where you want to be. You'd never, you'd never miss that, never get tired of missing that. But um, 
but yeah, just I couldn't go through the. Oh, that's a free ball. That is definitely a free yeah. ball. Put the practice and. I'll put uh, your four up, mate, before you start. And I know I've got this wild card, which obviously I'm very grateful for, and I'll never get out because I, because I want to play snooker, but. Going People these, misunderstand going, going, that. Going these, oh no, I they say, think it's a comeback. Get, why it's not do you comeback. get? I say no. It's what we owe Stephen Hendry. It's what we owe Jimmy White. And if you don't accept that, you've got the wrong governor. Yeah. Because I do remember. I mean, listen, I didn't like you all the time, obviously, because <laughs> you were bloody winning too much. Yeah. But I did appreciate what you were doing for the game. Yeah. And that means we owe you. While you've got a hole in your backside, you will get a wild card. Yeah. And so will Jimmy. And anyone who disagrees with it well, don't I understand si simple loyalty. That, I didn't want to see that pink go away. Oh, where did the side go? Where did the side go? No, but Jimmy is the same. Jimmy, I mean, Jimmy got his car back on merit this year, which says a lot. Doherty has done a lot, hasn't he? Yeah. He uh, why are you... Uh, oh. A free ball, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, no. That's twice I've missed that shot. But yeah, but it is, it is hard to go to these leisure centres for the qualifiers with no, yeah, no people walking but and watching and everything. But yeah. While you have to, that's how you earn your living. People go down mines. They don't really want to go down there, you know? <laughs> oh, no, that was a bit too skinny. I was thinking of going down a mine. <laughs> get past, get past, get past. But no, second bit, people keep saying, oh, this is the worst comeback ever. I said, it's not a comeback. I've got a wild card to play events that I want to play in. Yeah, play when you want to play and enjoy it. That's all I ask. I'll take that. When I started, my goal was to play the Crucible again. Whether it'll ever happen, I don't, I don't know. I doubt it. But that, yeah, I, I doubt it. But that, that's... Well, just... I doubt it because I don't think you'll ever put in enough... No. I don't think you'll ever put in enough time. Oh, what a shot that was. That's probably the worst shot I've ever seen. No, I know the, that, that's, that's exactly right. And to win four best of 19s to get there. I'm just giving away points here. You are. Ridiculous. And don't think it's not appreciated either. It's a treble. It's a treble. I can see it straight away. So go back to 1981, as I'm watching Davis clear the balls against Mountjoy. And I'm saying to myself, don't do anything stupid. I'm having the same conversation with myself now. <laughs> <laughs> don't do anything stupid. <laughs> Did you ever, ever go into his dressing room in the intervals of my, oh. Pardon? Do you ever go into his dressing room at the end of the matches? See if he was playing bad or he's behind. Did you ever go out and yeah, interfere with I the snooker in, side of it? I went in the dressing room every day. Because Ian used to interfere all the time. And I never said a word. Right. I would talk about... We went in the dressing room once and he was playing Thorpe and he was getting killed. And I went, if you can end up today in front, I will jump in that lake outside. On the way on. <laughs> and he just laughed. But it just... Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Down. yeah. The yeah, worst yeah. thing you can do with anyone He's bollock him. Well, Ian used to bollock me, but he actually no, used to no. work with me, though. No, but I think different people react different yeah, ways. Yeah, absolutely. Steve, had, if Steve was going to get a bollock in, the only person he'd take any notes of wouldn't be me, it'd be his, his dad. dad. yeah. And quite rightly, because they grew up together, they played the game together. I had no right. I have no right to tell anybody what to do in professional sport other than how to fill in their tax return and make millions and millions of pounds for himself. <laughs> You're, just, you're 21 in front, you only need the brown. I'm more than 21 in front. No, you're not, you're 21 in front. You read, the scores, you read the scores wrong. No, no, I didn't. I was 26 in front. No, that was, no, no yeah, you were, you were, that's wrong. No, 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 no. You, you can't put me off <laughs> this brown. We've, cam we've, anyway. we've got cameras on it. Would oh, you? look at that. Talk me right off the brown. Anyway, listen, it don't make any difference because it's in my contract. I have to win anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you clear these three, I'm going to give you the win anyway. Because well, just... I didn't come here to win, I came to get a free lesson. Look oh. at that for a shot. That... Judge, Judge Trump thinks you know a naughty what? snooker, that's naughty that, snooker. That's a proper snooker shot. <laughs> what a pleasure. Unlucky, Thank you mate. so much. <laughs> it was a joy to watch some of that was vintage Hendry. Not a lot, <laughs> no, but not. some of it. <laughs> <laughs>